This is Adventure North, and today you're about to learn about the lizard that you had no idea existed. Guys, today I am in Dakota County uh, walking around and today I'm going to be looking for skinks. Now skinks, um, they're lizards, but the only difference between like skinks and lizards is that skinks got these uh, short stubby legs and super long tails. That's kind of what distinguishes them um, from normal lizards. Uh, so they prefer this kind of like gravelly, uh, sandy type place with a mix of like prairie grasses and stuff. So we're gonna walk around and uh, we'll be flipping some rocks and just see what we come across today. First rock flip of the day. Let's see if we got anything sitting here. Oh my gosh, this is super cool, guys. Looks to be a red-bellied snake. These guys are super small. This is awesome. Usually not too aggressive. Yeah, I'm just sit in my hand here. Wow, this is sweet. Super cool catch to start the day. Oh, of course, he's, he's got a poop on me. All right, guys, so like I said, this is um, a red belly snake. This is super cool. These snakes are one of the smallest that Minnesota has to offer. This one's a lot smaller than um, some of them. I'd say at full length, they'd probably be about double this, but I mean, that's still, um, very small snake compared to some of the other ones that we have in Minnesota. Now these snakes get their name because it's pretty simple, it's called the red belly snake. And the snake, um, the bottom is not as bright as I've seen in past red bellies that I've caught, but you can tell there that it's just got that red belly, very distinct. Um, and that's what basically gives the snake its name. These snakes, you can probably tell, are very, very docile. Um, I mean, you saw that it pooped on me right when I caught it, but that's about the worst that they're gonna do. Even if this snake does decide to bite you, it's just gonna feel like a little pinch. It probably won't even break the skin, so these snakes are definitely not to be feared. All right, well, that's an awesome start to the day. Uh, we're gonna let him go back where he was and hope to find some skinks now. It's a good start. Second rock of the day, let's see if we have some more success. All right guys, good news, we have a skink inside this hole here, I see him. He's about to come out, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Okay, it's gonna be very tough to get him out, but you can see he's got his holes right, right down there and it comes in a loop here. All right, this is gonna be exciting. It's gonna be a tough catch, but hopefully I can get him. There's an escape hole right here too. This is how they enter and exit when the rock is in the way. So I'm gonna take a little stick. I'm gonna try and flush him out the back side. Hopefully we can get this guy out for the cameras. Very hard to catch, they're super quick. I believe there's only one in there. Oh, here he is. got through his little escape, escape hatch and he was under my hand and he slipped through. I mean, it's tough when they're babies, they're just getting underneath that grass and now I mean, he's not gonna be able to be found and that kind of stuff. The good thing is he will be coming back to this spot. I've seen him here a couple other times. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back later this evening and hopefully he'll be there and hopefully I'll be able to catch him. Um, so that'll be the plan going forward, I'll check around a little bit more but i know this is a hot spot for skinks i've found multiple under this exact rock over the past few years so um i guess we will hope to find them this evening that's the tough part sometimes about trying to catch uh, wild animals they're 
sometimes they're quicker, they're smarter, they're faster. Unfortunately, he got away this time, but I'll be back this evening, he'll be back this evening, and hopefully we'll be able to get him up close for the cameras later tonight. It's been about six hours now since I was here earlier today. Uh, it's cooled off a lot. It's a lot cooler outside now. And what I'm hoping is those skinks, or at least that one baby skink, is back underneath that same rock. So we're gonna check there. And hopefully he's waiting for us again. Check this rock again, see if our red-bellied snake friend is still here. Oh! <gasps> okay. All right, so that very same rock that I caught the red-bellied snake underneath uh, earlier this afternoon I just lifted this rock and we have a prairie skink here I'm gonna have my sister help him lift this rock and we're not gonna miss it this time all right here we go you're gonna grab from here and pull it backwards mm -hmm. yep This is the first prairie skink that I've caught in probably about three years, and I am uh, very hyped about this catch. Now, I believe this is a female prairie skink because at this time of the year, um, during mating season, the males all along their, um, their lips and their chin underneath are bright orange, uh, and that's for breeding season, so I'm assuming this is a female skink. So like I said earlier, when catching these uh, skinks, you have to be very, very careful because um, their tail will actually detach, and that's to help them get away from predators. So when the, when the tail uh, detaches, it'll sit there just wiggling around here, and what it does is it distracts the predator just long enough for the skink to get away and hide, which um, is very cool. They will grow another tail in a few months, but um, the tail won't be as long as their original one and also won't be as colorful. They're the most common skink to, um, that you come across in Minnesota. There's two other species, but this is the one that you're gonna come across most often. You'll find them in like sandy areas like we are right now and with um, some woodlands, some um, plenty, plenty of spaces to hide like this rock here. A few predators of the skink uh, include a lot of mammals such as raccoons, foxes, possums, and then also like snakes, crows, uh, different types of birds also are predators um, of the skink. On the flip side, these guys eat um, a bunch of little arachnids, little insects, so they'll have um, like crickets, spiders, grasshoppers, things along those lines. Just that smaller stuff that they can um, get their hands on. All right, I think it's about time to let this little guy go. And like I said earlier, I would recommend not trying to catch a skink. If you ever come across one in the wild, I would recommend not trying to catch it just because of the possibility of its tail detaching. And then for those three months while it's regrowing, it makes it very vulnerable, vulnerable to predators. So um, it's just best to view these guys from a distance. And I'm glad I was able to get this guy up close for the cameras for you guys. There he goes, back into the wild. They kinda look like a snake when they move. All right, so I'm back to the rock where I caught the, um, or tried to catch the baby skink earlier today. Just what I expected, he's back. I see him. Yep. Got him. That is awesome. All right, besides the size um, to tell that it's a baby, you can tell right down here with this blue tail how you can distinguish the babies from the um, mature males and females. All right, well that's pretty cool. Two skinks in one day when I couldn't even um, find one in about three years. So it's pretty exciting. They're uh, super cool. So now you guys know uh, what skinks look like, the lizard that nobody really knows about. One unfortunate thing about this place is I was talking to a local homeowner and said that their um, 
going to be taking this whole place and turn it into more homes. So that means lots of habitat for the skinks here, the frogs, for the toads, for the snakes, which is always sad to see. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you learned something of value or learned something new today uh, with this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you guys have any um, recommendations or want us to catch any certain animals, let us know in the comments and we'll see what we can do.